ونحن كذلك لسنا كاملين هل نجعل قصصنا ذات صلة بالواقع وذات صلة بالزمن الذي نعيش فيه هل نتكلم ونحن نعلم حقيقة الزمان والوقت الذي نعيش فيه أم ونحن كذلك لسنا كاملين في موضوعية وبطريقة غير متصلة بالحقيقة التي نعيشها والتي لا وجود لها وإنما هي موجودة فقط في أذهاننا وعقولنا ما هو الاتجاه الذي نريد أن نأخذ قصصنا فيه قصصنا لابد أن تكون ذات معنى وذات إرشاد للناس والتي في بعض الأحيان تسأل أو تطرح أسئلة صعبة وعميقة التي تثير أعماق الإنسان هل نحن نسأل هذه الأسئلة من خلال القصص الذي نلقيه وهل نحن نؤدي هذه القصص بجودة عالية هل نحن نعرض هذه القصص بجودة عالية هل منتجاتنا كما يقولون ذات جودة عالية الصوتيات والإذاعة والبودكاست ترغم المستمع أن يكون في حوار معك مع أنك لست موجود بجانبه وهي وسيلة ذات إدارة رحيمة وشفيعة عندما تتأثر بالقصة التي تسمعها يبدأ اتصالك يأخذ في النماء المستمر بهذه القصص إخواني وأخواتي ومعلمي هذه وسيلة مستمرة في النماء في أماكن مثل الولايات المتحدة 33% من السكان يستمعون إلى البودكاست وفي أماكن مثل كوريا الجنوبية ترتفع هذه النسبة إلى 58% من السكان وفي بريطانيا تنمو إلى نحو 20% وأعتقد أن في وقتنا الحالي وفي عصرنا هذا لابد أن نعتبر هذه الوسيلة أنها وسيلة محورية في طريقة تخاطبنا مع الآخر في طريقة عرضنا لرسالتنا وليس فقط في أداء رسالتنا بل في طريقة تفاعلنا مع مستمعينا لأنه في آخر المطاف هذه البرامج الصوتية هي محاورة بين المتكلم والمستمع وهي نقطة بداية في كثير من الأحيان لهذه الحوارات أشكركم على إتاحتكم هذه الفرصة لي وعلى إستماعكم لهذه الوجهات في النظر وأأمل أن أستطيع أن أشارككم بالحضور من خلال الزوم عندما يعرض هذا المقطع في الملتقى جزاكم الله خيرا على وقتكم وعلى صبركم والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله فتحنا الصور اجربوا تكلموا لا وتكلم على القضية أن العالم المعاصر فرصة لإلقاء قصة الإسلام وقصص قرآنه الكريم بما يتناسب مع أسلوب العصر كذلك تكلم على قضية أن هناك فرصة قوية وسانحة من خلال وسيلة سمعية وتكلم على دور بودكاست الوسيلة التي بدأت في 2004 والتي وجدت لها مجال حاليا في العالم والآن بدأت تزحف في وطين العربي وتحدث على قضية مهمة وهي سهولة آلات الوسيلة السمعية من خلال وسائل في متناول الأيدي كذلك تكلم على أن المستوى الصوتي الدعوي خاصا يعاني حالة ركود ويحتاج للتجديد وختم بنقطتين مهمتين وهي أن الإلقاء الصوتي فن له أدبياته وله قواعده وختم بسؤال مهم وهو هل نلقي القصص حينما نلقيها بمعرفة المغزى وبعاطفة حال الإلقاء وتناسب بين القصة والواقع أو لا جزا الله خير الأستاذ عبد الرحمن على ما قدم خير الجزاء وأسر الله تعالى أن ينفع به الأمة كلها نبقى أيها الأحبة الأكارم مع تقرير عن الدائرة الإعلامية بدار المصطفى صلى الله عليه وآله وصحبه وسلم للدراسات الإسلامية خلال 25 عاما فليتفضلوا مصطفى بتريم للدراسات الإسلامية ذلكم المنبر العلمي الرفيع المستوى
هذه الدار التي احتضن الطلاب العلم الشريف المتعطشين لأخذ العلم من منابعه الصافية على منهج الوسطية والاعتدال حتى أصبح مقصدا لطلاب العلم من أسقاع المعمورة فحوى كافة الجنسيات العربية والأجنبية من قارات العالم الست وهو يزخر بأربعين جنسية لذا كانت حتما أن شكلت إدارته الحكيمة مجموعات فرعية عن الإدارة تدير كل واحدة مجالها في خدمة الدين والعلم الشريف في ظل الشريعة السمحاء على أسس ومقاصد ثلاثة العلم والسلوك والدعوة إلى الله وكلها تصب في مصب واحد وهي خدمة العلم وطلاب العلم فمن حين تأسس دار المصطفى على يد الحبيب العلامة عمر بن محمد بن سالم بن حفيظ لعام 1414 للهجرة استمر العمل في إنشاء المبنى المخصص له حتى افتتح في ذي الحجة لعام 1417 للهجرة يوفقنا لشكر هذه النعمة العظيمة وأن يجعلنا من يستفيد من هذه النعم وأن وأن يشغلها بما يرضي الباري جل جلاله. يقول إيه هذه الدور ما فيها شهادات كيف تتخرجون؟ كيف تعلمون؟ نقول نحن نرى أنها لبنة ليست على غرار النظام الرسمي ولو أنها تخدمه لكن ليست على غير النظام الرسمي، نحن نخاطب شعوب المسلمين، وهذا اسلوب كان عليه سلفنا حيث ما جاءوا فتحوا لهم مدارس، يخرجوا منها دعاء، يخرجوا منها ائمه، يخرجوا منها اصحاب السنه مباركه وعقول مباركه. نحب منكم التوجه الى الله. في شان ضعفنا وعجزنا وفي شان هذا المكان وفي شان المترددين اليه ان يقبلهم ربه وان يقبل بوجهه عليه وان يجعلهم خدمة لهذه الشريعة وخدمة لهذه الطريقة وخدمة للمسلمين في المشارب وفي المغارب ومن هذه الدوائر الدائرة الإعلامية الدائرة الإعلامية إن الإعلام الهادف ركيزة من ركائز المجتمع ومن هنا كان الاهتمام بهذه الوسيلة فتأسست من أجل ذلك الدائرة الإعلامية مبحرة في بحر الإعلام الهادف فمنذ تأسيسها عملت على توثيق جميع الأعمال التي قامت من أجلها هذه الدار فبدأت في تصوير وحفظ ونشر كل ما يتعلق من دروس وندوات وفعاليات حيث وكبت في عملها على قد توصل له الجانب الإعلامي من أجهزة فنية وتصوير للكوادر على مختلف فتراتها وحسب الإمكانيات المتاحة وعلى مدار عمل الدائرة منذ تأسيسها وأرشيفها زاخر بالدروس والمناسبات وغيرها من الفعاليات فمن البداية حوى أرشيفها ما يعادل خمسة وعشرين ألف ساعة من الدروس والندوات والحلقات العلمية والفعاليات واستمرت في عملها وواكبت التحديثات المستمرة في مجال الإعلام حسب إمكانياتها المتواضعة ولك أن تتخيل ما يحتوي إرشيفها من وقتنا الحالي من آلاف الساعات وما زالت أعمالها مستمرة ومع تطور العمل الإعلامي ودخول الإعلام مرحلة الفضائيات والإنترنت 
كان للإعلام بالدار أن يؤكد هذا التطور ويتماشى معه لغرض نشر ما هو مفيد للأمة الإسلامية فقد أنتجت العديد من البرامج التلفزيونية للقنوات الفضائية اليمنية وبعض القنوات العربية لما اعتنت الدار الإعلامية بالصور كان لابد من إنشاء صفحات ومواقع إلكترونية باسم الدار لوصول النفع للكثير كما اعتنت بالجانب الصوتي والتمثيل في إنشاء إذاعة صوتية إذاعة بث نور الإيمان كان بداية تأسيسها عام 1996 الموافق لعام 1417 هجرية والتي كانت تغطي منطقة الدار وما حولها لتتسع دائرة البث إلى تغطية أغلب مناطق البلدة وتبث جميع الدروس والمحاضرات والندوات والفعاليات حيث وصلت مدة البث الإذاعي إلى 19 ساعة يومية في وقتنا الحالي فكانت لها الدور الكبير في نفع الناس لتتسع فيما بعد إلى تريم وضواحيها واليوم تعد إذاعة بث نور الإيمان أحد أكبر الإذاعات انتشارا وشهرة على مستوى المنطقة ودخلت علم المنظومات الرقمية التلفزيونية ليصل بثنا لأغلب مناطق وادي حضرموت والساحل وأيضا تبث عبر الإنترنت إلى كافة دول العالم ووصلت المتابعة لحد كتابة التقرير إلى خمسة ملايين ومائتين وتسعة عشر ألفا وخمسمائة وثلاثين متابعة من حوالي مائة وستة وسبعين دولة يدير هذه الأعمال كوادر شبابية هاوية للعمل والخدمة لهذا الصرح والمتمثل بالدار ومقاصدها ومن خلال عملها الطويل في هذا المجال تركوا بصمة وأثرا يشار لهم فيها بالبنان ومع اتساع العمل الإعلامي وغزو الفضاء بالقنوات والشبكات العنكبوتية كان ظهور مؤسسات مساندة ومن هذه المؤسسات مركز المدينة للإنتاج الإعلامي وقناة الإرث النبوي جزا الله الإخوان في الدائرة الإعلامية على هذا التقرير المقتضب المفيد والذي أطلعون فيه على نشاط قارب الربع القرن في ما حواه هذا الإرشيف من 25 ألف درس فعالية كذلك ذكر أن من نشاطاته إنتاج البرامج لقنوات فضائية محلية وعربية وكذلك إنشاء صفحات إلكترونية 
متنوعة وذكر أن بث نور الإيمان بدأ في عام 1417 وصل بثه حتى الساعة إلى 19 ساعة في اليوم وله بث إلكتروني عبر النت وصل عدد المشاهدين إلى ما يفوق 5 مليون متابع من 170 دولة جزاهم الله كل خير على ما قدموا نبقى أيها الأحباب الأكارم مع المحور التاسع من محاور هذا الملتقى والذي يحمل عنوان مقاصد العمل الإعلامي وآدابه مقاصد العمل الإعلامي وآدابه يقدم هذا المحور سيد المربي الحبيب علي زين العابدين الجفري وهو رئيس مجلس أمناء مؤسسة طابة للأبحاث والاستشارات فليتفضل جزاه الله عنا وعنكم كل خير شيخ مختار حبيب علي الجفري and how Ali Jifri begins with sending peace and blessings, praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and sending peace and blessings upon the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. And, that Allah, and then he asked that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses us all with good health, as particularly for Habib Umar, who is currently uh, feeling unwell. And that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala extends his health in good long and in good life. And that he, and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows Habib's eyes to be called by him and his beloveds and those who are close. The discussion for today's lecture, it is the purposes or the aims of uh, working um, uh, in, 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 in media and, and um, its, its etiquettes. And I'd like to begin with mentioning the purpose behind every word. What do we mean by i'lam? What is this i'lam? What is medium that we media that we are talking? He says that it is. It means. What is what does that mean? Because as it has as the title of this multaqa has been uh, i'lam, the main focus of i'lam. I'm going to be speaking about a specific time of i'lam. And Habib Abu Bakr bin Hafid and many have spoken very carefully and very and have done really well in explaining this about the media and about um, uh, which is sufficient enough for many problems they carried many solutions to many of our problems but today in particular the the, the purpose behind this title for the multaqa and how we can benefit from making this. How can we benefit from medium? This is only a path to reaching the aims and reaching the purposes. What is the connection between this and, and our aims? We, we have, a, we have a, a general purpose, a pur an aim that we ask for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to reach. And this main or just general purposes or aim is the th is ilm and amal, which is um, uh, which is um, knowledge and learning, and then acting upon what you learn, and then calling to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. So here, what we're talking about is here the media, which allows us to facilitate the making of reality. These three things: ilm, um, knowledge, and um, and practicing upon knowledge and da'wah. And in the modern terminology of it, of, of media, it is the transformation, the, the trans, the, tr the, 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 um, the moving or the, the transmission of knowledge or mass inf or information. And when we look at it under this, under this meaning, there are two main purposes of, of media. Number one is... Which is... Um, um, making reality the um, uh, the, the co conveying the conveying so the conveying the true message, conveying the true um, the true uh, spirituality, conveying the true uh, message um, of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. And if we look at it from a different perspective, which is implementing these understandings, these correct understandings. And, and, and making it clear to, to show, shed light on the issues and to correct the misunderstandings and the misconceptions. And we understand that we hear that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used, he, he used media to be built upon these three main priorities, which is knowledge and acting upon knowledge 
and giving da'wah. And the Prophet Sallallahu allowed it to happen around him. He used many different mediums, such as poetry, such as um, 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 expeditions, such as um, um, sending um, some of the Sahaba, the companions away. This is a way of transmitting information. So it is, a, it is a establishing a path, a connection, a way which we can, where the aim, our aims can be, um, can be met. And the different means of media today can never ever overpower or can never ever be sufficient or be sufficient enough as media over what is truly the media that or the medium that we use and that we have established within our tradition. And that which is the path that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam has taught us and has showed us. So many, many, many places where I would go around, I would, I would find students in cities and in and even if it's in outside outskirts of the cities where you see a few students of knowledge who are who are strong in their knowledge and the amount of work that they do in terms of transmitting this information of the sharia it has more of an impact or a beneficial impact than tv or any other modern tech modern methods of transmitting information the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam said made what we can learn is that he made a medium or this transmitting of information such as in the story of Hassan um, uh, of Hassan um, if, if, if I mentioned it correctly where he where Allah where the messenger of Allah made dua that he does ex, that he expresses the true message that after appointing him in a role of conveying the message that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows him to truly manifest and to convey the message of the Messiah, of, of, of Prophet um, Isa, Jesus. So the point here, the topic here is how we can, uh, how the true information, this information can reach the different places and, and, and areas and different walks of life. So, for example, conveying the true methodology of the, the true way of ideology. So, one would use the tra different transmissions of media to support the teaching of the true um, realities of ideology. So, for example, let's talk about fiqh and let's talk about nahu. Let's talk about the path upon the, 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 the path to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the diseases of the heart, all of its branches are far and wide and are very detailed and how to connect, how to correct the affairs of the heart and so on. All of these sort of intricate details in finding There has been many successful attempts in conveying the true methodologies, the true, the true ideologies, even through the modern um, terminal, the modern understanding of, or the modern way of, of transmitting uh, or, or of, of media. And so we know that the acceptance is given once we are sincere in our actions and then talking about sincerity but making sure that there's emphasis on sincerity through the transmissions when it's being transmitted through media where whichever outlet that it is going through this type of a positive of, of, of engagement which where people were affecting and impacting on other people of your actions through your sincerity this is a means of correcting the sincerity even if that means through media and that is a huge role of strengthening your um your sincerity and your connection your acceptance and your action at the same time can be transmitted through and how many other people can uh, 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 it reaches the benefit the main purpose of it And, the and, and Habib Umar mentioned it very clearly. He said, he said, he said, surrender 
surrender your affairs to the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam wa sahbihi wa sallam. And Habib Abu Bakr similarly mentioned the same, the same, um, the same idea. So steadfastness upon correcting sincerity with its intricacies and its details, we hear our we hear what the people say that the last thing that leaves the mind of an individual who has reached the highest rank of closest to Allah, which is Siddiqi, which is the truthfulness, the thing which leaves their mind last is loving to be in a place, position of power where people can see you, people know who you are. And media of the way it is now, it is the main outlet, it is the main place to be known or to become famous. So if the, the one the one who who speaks upon steadfastness in the sign of not caring about people and pleasing people or being known by people or being accepted by people or whether so and so is watching you or not having that sort of approach to it pushes away that um, which which brings in the blameworthy use of media. So, so that we that we get rid he mentions that you rid yourself or rid this your, your mind and your your soul of you feeling that you're doing a favor for people i re, i remember habib umar before around more than 10 to actually 20 years ago we he said he 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 made us aware of a verse of the quran it's either us or you who are in guidance or we are in misguidance. And then he, Habib said, is there any possibility that the, that the messenger of Allah was on misguidance? No, there's no, there's not a single possibility that he was in misguidance. This is a reality. But the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa, alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam with the etiquette which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praised his character. He mentioned this, uh, he used this, the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa, alayhi wa, sahbihi wa sallam says, Uh, where Allah subhanahu, wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, do not speak about what we have uh, 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 what we have done or the, what we have committed and what you have done. So there's a difference, there's a difference, there's a, there's a, there's a linguistical difference. But when even when they came to him and they started um, accusing him of, of, of acting upon crimes, he, even though he has... Uh, the, the the reality or the revelation being revealed to him he in, in his etiquette that even the manner of how it returns where they will accuse you of in the linguistical differences which is they'll accuse you of crime and you will and you don't ask about what their actions are where allah subhanahu wa ta'ala covers it this is etiquette of the way how the Prophet transmitted the words of allah subhanahu wa this is the sort of etiquette that we should have that we don't become means of corruption. We don't become a means of pushing people away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through our media, through our platforms, through our websites, through our social media accounts. We must up uphold that these, these morals or these things which we have that we must hold within us. We are in a, we are in a deep need to, to, to have a, a, a manner, a step, without without becoming overwhelming, a, a step approach in um, in how we display our religiosity. Let's not mix. Uh, he quotes Habib Umar saying, "Let's not mix the correct use or a good use of social media with good knowledge of it." 
let's not let's not let's not think that that um, um, let's not think that doesn't show anything. It shows us that we need to know more. We need to learn more about it, and we need to come to the that at the same time with our using of it correctly in a manner which pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we don't completely surrender to it and what it subjects into how we are and how we present ourselves to the world and in, in, in accordance to how we use them how we use it so when we're talking about let's use media the uh, use media or social media or whichever media is in a better way let's not make it Let's not let's not make the cost or the price for that to be to completely destruct the main purpose of it, which is that we are affected by it and that we are changed by it, that our faith is affected by it and that we are impacted. And Habib Umar and Habib Bakr al mashur they are the ones who have mentioned many that the situation brings forth the, 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 the recommendation to use the current situation that we're in, that we go and find that we study. I don't I don't want to extend and I don't want to be too long carry on for too long we are in a time where um, there's much fitness that it really does come to what the messenger says that there will come a time where the truthful one has said that he's a liar and the liar said that he is truthful and the one who is who is who is um, uh, trustworthy becomes deceitful or it becomes a cheater or is claimed to be a cheater and the one who's a cheater is going to be trusted this is what the messenger told us and it is incumbent upon us that we are aware of this that we must seek authenticity that we must know we should not jump to spreading and to sharing articles or whatever manif whichever form that it is in let's check if it's true first let's do some fact checking let's not jump to that we have as a huge responsibility between us and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we make sure it is correct what we are spreading what we are sharing what we are mentioning on our social medias and statuses and messenger of allah وسلم, says that the time will come where a person will lie and his lie instantaneously will reach the east or the furthest points of the east and it will reach the furthest points of the west this is from warning of messenger of do not jump do not rush to sharing something before checking if it is authenticity the messenger of allah وسلم, said it is enough for a sin a grave sin to class someone with uh, eternally wretched if he says everything that he hears so we must know and we must we must check the authenticity of what we are sharing and second thing is that we want to understand we should understand the the, the aim behind why this has been posted why what we want to share we must know and check the methodology the ideology behind why this was shared and we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept and that we ask allah to make us of those who um who uh, use this media the correct way And Sheikh Mukhtar Jamil here, he summarizes what Habib Ali Jifri said. He says that here in the Multaqa, it is talking about a specific time of media. It's not about it's not about the normal general way which we have perceived it to be. Then Habib Ali spoke that that if we understand media or this mediums, we must we must connect. Once we understand it, we must connect it to the the, the values which we have and aims we have as Muslims, and then we have. Simon, the multiqas like this have two main aims. One, which is to um, to beautify or to certify the conveying of the message and to push away any false or misconceptions and misunderstanding. And then he ended with a hadith of the Messenger of Allah وسلم, that the Messenger's method of media transmission was the mimbar and was lessons and what was sitting in front and it was sharing. And then Habib Ali Jifri spoke about the importance of using media, the different methodologies of it, and that there is um, a blame that we share in using it. There's three etiquettes. Number one, make sure that we are using it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that that it doesn't that that you push away and remove everything which diverts your inner compass away from the Messenger of Allah and away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that there's a respect, and there's a transmission. There's a there's a, there's a respect between everyone using the right um, etiquettes in transmitting and in sharing. And the third, it is to make sure that it is correct 
what we are sharing, that we understand it, and that we understand the purpose behind the ideology of who is sharing this or who has written this. So we remain here with a, uh, an, a Sheikh Yahya Rodas of Maqasid um, in, in America, who's going to add on briefly to what Habib Ali Jifri has mentioned. It begins with beginning in the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I, in reality, don't see a need there to be more words once we have heard the words of Habib Ali. And it is sufficient for us what we have seen in of this great um, muntaqa that we have been. There's no need on anything for me to be here. It is sufficient, everything that we have heard. And here, I am a child in front of everyone here. So I would share with you a few thoughts that came to mind. It's like a child who is learning how to drive or how to ride in front of his parents and his parents correct him. So when I think about the sort of understanding, I think of it in English. So I, I may not be able to fully um, express or articulate um, this topic in English, uh, in Arabic, as I mainly discuss these things in English. In, in, in English. So I, from a place near Silicon Valley, uh, I learned I might, this where I live, it doesn't, it doesn't, it's not too far away from the main place where um, like Netflix and all these huge companies um, are and where they are located. I, I was raised in the, in their sort of communities before Islam and after Islam. And you might see from what it is said, um, from what I say, it might, I might be a bit, I might um, address particular issues, but I'm not attacking. So my main topic would be how we can use internet, but at the same time holding on to our principles and values as Muslims. So some of what I have said might be clear and the rest of what I have said, what I will say may have already been said. So, so that and there's no bad in it being repeated and that we can have these principles further implemented within our minds if I am repetitive. The first point which I want to mention, Sayyid Habib Ali has already mentioned, which is the intention. And what follows it with sincerity for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I would like to mention a story in this particular topic. For there are many Christians and many other religions. They do well or they are well in using media. But in particular, the people of religions, of other religions, who are, are capable of using it. I remember a time, there was a while, uh, they used from a long time ago and from this time. Whenever we see these people or individuals or these people, we feel that there's a wrongdoing which happens with inside the heart. We even with, with excellence, like what we see within them is how excellent they are with media and how they have controlled. One person would feel inside their heart darkness. Why is this darkness which creeps up upon their hearts? For many reasons, it could be for what intentions that they have inside. I, I am quite confident that it is all goes back to our intention and having ikhlas. If I mention the story of my parents, and I, and I don't wish, and I, and, I, and I like to mention this story. When I was studying in Tareem, in time during my studies, my parents came to me more than once. They came to me three times, actually. They weren't Muslims at that time. So my, my father in particular, he had a lot of difficult problems with with Islam. He had, he had, up until the, get to a point where I would go back and then we would speak very briefly about the fundamental of he would become angry. He wouldn't like to speak about because it would it would really annoy him that I was I was Muslim. It really so I couldn't really get have good conversations with him. So I I, I originally I did not want him to come here. I was afraid. 
I thought maybe maybe he would expose me or he would say things about me or he would spread things about me. I did not want him to come here. So the first night that he came here to Tirim, we were sitting in the house together. He attended the, the aqiqa of my daughter who was born here. And in, the, in that time, he had no good meaning or meaning or good under, me understanding of We never had any discussions since he arrived. We sat in the presence of Habib for the first day that he came, and then we said Habib Umar welcomed him. So after Habib Umar spoke to my father, he mentioned a few things, a few beautiful things. I found my father to start crying. This is the first. I have never, ever seen my father cry. I've never seen him in my life. I've never seen him cry even once in my life. But I see him crying. So then my mom saw my dad crying and then my mom started crying. So we left and then we left the room and Habib Umar left. So then my father is in a he's in a he's in a condition. He's just he just really moved. He was in he was in, he was quite shocked and he's saying I've seen Christians and I've seen Jews and I've seen Muslims but I've never seen someone like that before and he's referring to Habib Umar. The, the purpose of why I'm mentioning this is that someone who's lived in America and grew up in America and he was a veteran and he spent time in the military and who you would ever think that they would accept this or any sort of reluctance that they would have, they came and they sat in the presence of Habib and they changed. Imagine that, just one gathering. All those veils which was in my father was removed just in that one night from sitting with Sayyidina Habib. My father didn't, my father hasn't accepted Islam as of yet but he is so close. When I ask him, do you believe in Allah? He says, yes. And when he says, do I believe in the message? Do you believe in the message of Allah? He says, yes. So he's, it's really close. And what I'm talking about, my, my mother, my mother has accepted Islam, alhamdulillah. And why she became a Muslim or, is that there was a moment, there was a day on, 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 on a Friday, in Saturday, after Asr in the time of acceptance, I'm, and I mentioned in the gathering why I've returned back to America. There was a reason why I came and she wasn't aware of it. So, and she knows that I love Tareem and I wouldn't leave Tareem, but I mentioned in the gathering why I left Tareem. People came and, uh, and I was explaining to them. So then I mentioned, so I mentioned in the story that I know I love Tareem and I would not want to leave Tareem but Habib Umar has told me to leave Tareem so I can be obedient to my mother and be around my mother my mother did not know that and she listened and she heard that and she accepted Islam so what I'm saying here is that if we hold on to it if we hold on to our religion parents, obedience and um, exposing them to the people of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala nothing is a barrier veils are burnt and veils are taken away and the second point which I want to talk about is the importance of understanding media and what is behind it in psychologies, in, 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 in philosophies, which is deeply implemented and found within inside the internet. There's many books which are written about the philosophy of technology. And understanding this philosophy is really important. It's incumbent that we understand it. So if we want to use it to our, our best interest and to call it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we must understand a way and we, our understanding must be a deep understanding. Messenger of Allah وسلم, وسلم says that wisdom is a lost property of a believer. Wherever he sees it, he takes it and he picks it. It's not everything that we see. We should just be, we, could, we should just uh, criticize it or let's understand it. Let's, let's go to its roots. Then we remove whatever of the main reason is connected to it of negativity or evil intentions, then we move that to build or adorn it with intentions which go in line with our religion, and then we move that. And, then, and in that process of itself, adorning uh, the main purposes of using the internet, understanding it, some people may misuse it, even though they have the right intentions and they might want to bring in Islam. And I like to summarize, and don't want to go on for too long. So again, I would like to again reiterate what Habib Ali Jifri said, which is that we should see it as um, we, we should see yet, yet in the internet as a marketplace of desires and of just wishes and lusts. We must 
always hold our role within our internet with importance. We must be around uh, the people who work on building people and not destructing people. This is what we want. We want people to benefit. We want people to be the causes for, the, for people to, to, to build, to grow. And sometimes we as Muslims might wrong doing it and that we might see that the means as the main purpose, which is not the way. This is just a means. This is just a way. This is just a tool that we use. And so we think that sometimes, you know, we need to do this and we need to do that. And then we jump with it and, we've, and then we start losing our minds and we start losing the main purpose as to why we've moved our da'wah, focused our da'wah onto it. It says the main purpose, which was ikhlas. My fourth purpose is to be excellent or to become, to master everything that we can in terms of it. The Messenger of Allah وسلم, says, Allah loves from you that if you do something that you master it. Let's master it according to our ability, especially something which has got to do with the transmission of information and not falling short or deficiency that we must avoid falling short as what Imam Al-Ghazali says, Imam, Imam Al says, what Imam Ghazali says in the book chapter of Tawheed and Tawakkul is a very important chapter in there which things which nullify dependency on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which then pushes the person to be dependent upon the causes and not on the creator of causes so one can go and return and find that book to be very useful. So let's try to master what we can and how we can use or be dutiful in our role in using um, in, uh, internet and media. So there's many, many times, uh, me personally, as Muslims in the West, we live in the West, we feel that we don't have the right eloquency in expressing the beauties of this religion verbally and and, and and connecting that to people where people can connect to. So, so there's a book in English which is how we can gain friends or obtain friends where many people when, so So in a point where there was a book which didn't have the right purpose behind it, but we, we can always find benefit in some things. And once we found in this book, um, I think it's how to make friends and alienate people, I believe, um, if, if I mentioned it correctly. And how we should, how we can use eloquence as a part of communication, how we perfect communication, how we find a means of becoming, uh, to be able to pull or to be able to be convincing and then once we found that in that book, Sayyid al-Habib read the book and he said, what's in our religion is more than what is inside here. Meaning we have much more that we don't, we're not in need of this book. And the last point, which is, let's remove the veneration of media and internet from our hearts. Let's not see it as something great. Let's not be astonished by it. Let's not be, let's battle our nafus. Let's butter ourselves so that we'll remove any amazement, veneration, revering that we hear, that we feel towards internet, towards technology. Many people, we can say perhaps that they can, they would think that the internet and technology is in the space of miracles, um, meaning the way that it is received and the way it is uh, conceived. This emptiness that we feel on the inside, it is the greatest sign that wherever we are and we are feeling that, 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 that emptiness inside us. And I'm someone who has grown in those sort of societies and I have felt that myself and it's paused and I didn't get the last part which he said, but he says, I would like to end with a verse. He said that when someone um, learns and uses and learns, it, it becomes a huge cause for, it gives a lot of person confidence 
and um, will or, 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 or confidence to, to do whichever they want. The example of this world is a land where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent upon to rain and that everyone and the livestock is failed from, uh, has, has fed from it. And then what has happened is it has grown. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that the people believe that they are in full control of it. Look, this is what's happened. The people or these societies, let's not venerate them. Let's not think of it as something amazing. They've seen this blessing which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given them. They think that they have full control over it. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala finishes that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Our, my command reached that land and that it became to such an extent that it was it was that it, it wouldn't look like it was even there yesterday it was completely taken away what Sheikh Yahya wrote this means from that is that uh, Allah uses this as an example where Allah gives to people and then it becomes so useful to them and they grow in it and they develop in it and then they uh, they they pioneer in it and they think that they have control over it and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's amr or commandment reaches it or his order commandment and then it is not as if it is as if it has not even been there ever and there's no signs of it ever being there so do not lose the power allah is the one worthy of veneration and not these these individuals and sheikh muhtar thanks sheikh yahya wrote us and summarizes what he has said ولكن أسف الشديد مع ذلك في هذه الوسائل التي يحسن توظيفها يشعر المتلقي بظلمانية هو يقول قد يكون بسبب سوء النية وتكلم على قضية الصدق في الإخلاص بأنه وسيلة لبث الأثر في الوسيلة وتكلم على قضية مهمة وهي فهم فلسفة الإعلام بمعنى الخلفية والدوافع الأخلاقية والمادية البرغماتية تكلم كذلك على قضية ضرورة استخدام الوسائل بعد تجريدها من النتوءات الداخل عليها التي تحرفها عن مسارها كذلك تكلم على قضية ضرورة الإتقان في الأخذ بهذه الوسائل في دائرة المستطاع وتكلم على حسن أو إحسان فهم ما لدينا وحسن عرضه وهي ضرورة عصرية وتكلم كذلك على قضية ضرورة النظر للوسائل على أنها مجرد وسائل وذلك بنزع تعظيم من القلوب وختم بآية سورة يونس حتى إذا أخذت الأرض زخرفها وزينت وظن أهلها أنهم قادرون عليها أتها أمرنا وكان شيخنا سيد الحيوك المشهور قد تكلم على هذه الآية بإطناب بما يتناسب مع فهم ما وضعه الشيخ يحيى جزا الله الجميع خير الجزاء كان مقرر أن تكون هناك مداخلة للدكتور محمد عبد الحكيم الأزهر من الهند ولكن لظرف صحي لم يتمكن من المداخلة فهو يعتذر ويطلب الدعاء من الجميع ونسأل الله تعالى أن يثيبه وأن يعافيه نفتح أبواب أو باب المداخلة والأسئلة مع التنبيه إلى أن المداخلة ستكون إما مداخل إثراء أو لسؤال لما طرح مع ملاحظة أمرين اثنين الأول موضوعية من خلال ما طرح في هذه الليلة الأمر الثاني question. الوقت And now it's time for questions and answers where they will ask Habib Ali and Jeffrey questions. Yeah, 
ولكن وقف أمامها إيمان هذا الرجل حتى أنزل كلامه منزلة اليقين بل منزلة السماع الحقيقي قال إنما ازددت إيمانا أنك الأعور الدجال ليس الذي رووا رووا لنا ولكن الذي حدثنا كأنه سمع رسول الله من شدة وقع الإيمان وإيمانه بحقائق الإيمان حتى كأن رسول الله يخاطبه أن هذا هو الأعور الدجال الذي حدث عنه رسول الله وهذا يعني قضية ترسيخ مثل هذه المفاهيم هي ركيزة في هذا المجال والعظم جزاك الله خير على هذا. He's going to add a few points. حبيب كادم. When everyone spoke about the 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 the, the, the salvation or the success in it is sincerity, sincerity and truthfulness in our success in life, in whichever endeavors, and let that be media, and in the manner of using social media or media in itself to please Allah Subhanahu wa Taala for the main purposes. So the question is. It's uh, every every idea, every ideology, methodology, methodology, who wants to place their um, their thoughts and their ideas. It's important that we and the users of internet we properly establish a way to display our knowledge and to give our um, to uh, to to correctly and strongly use our evidence as our proofs, such as Nabiullah Ibrahim who used something very simple to reach to the conclusion of God where Allah subhanahu where, where the person said I bring life and to death I bring life and I take and I give death and then Nabiullah Ibrahim said then bring the sun out from the opposite direction you see it's these sort of proofs these sort of um, uh, these sort of putting a word in where it is where it's supposed to be being eloquent being adequate being precise being um, precise in what we say what we do and spreading this religion is absolutely important to to correctly display we're not we're not selling we're not to, for east or for west or whoever we are we have islam and we and we need if we are going to be representing or if we're going to be displaying this message of islam and conveying it then we need to use the right words and we need to learn eloquence in speech and we need to be able to put everything in its place in this proper place lest we wrong do it and and the best way to get, find that is the way of us to study the quran and see the methods which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses in bringing examples and in changing understandings and in giving what we need and placing everything there so that we can reach that conclusion of there being a creator, of Islam being the religion, of Muhammad being a messenger. Sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. So when a very good evidence is brought in front of you and a proof is there and it's strong and it's beautifully precise no matter whoever that person is it has a huge impact on that individual or for everyone who's watching and i wish to just added that on um i just added that up on the thoughts which few, which came to mind and we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for tawfiq and acceptance في بلادنا كثير من الأسر المحافظة 
التي إلى هذه اللحظة لم يسمحوا بدخول التلفاز إلى بيوتهم ولكن يأتي واحد ويقول لماذا لا that don't even have a TV in their households. And then people come to them and say, hey, listen, why don't you get a TV and then put on Habib Umar or put on Habib al or put on these scholars. So what's your advice? And the question is open to the Habaib there, President. What do we advise those people who are like those who are very strict, who don't have TVs in their homes? And then we tell them, hey, you know, you can watch something good. You watch this and watch that, get this channel and so on. And then what happens? Uh, because we all know that once we try to get these channels, with one channel comes 20 channels. One good channel comes with 30 uh, useless or um, corrupting or um, evil channels. So what's the question? Should they remain upon not having a TV or, or the protection that they have over themselves? Or should they join everyone else and get a TV and then learn how to um, stop or use it and manage it properly? And we ask Allah to protect us all and thank us. And then we have a final question, I believe. He's a journalist. He's thanking Dar al-Mustafa for being invited. And his question is for Habib Ali. He says, what you have mentioned in authenticity or fact-checking, we have that. I work as a, as a journalist and I work and we, we have papers we have this sort of fact-checking systems in process. My question is for Habib Ali, is that whether according to your understanding of people in media or the messages used in media, the question is, do, do you have any points of advice for us who work in media? The second question is, No, I missed the beginning of the question. The second question. And the third question is for Habib Ali. He says, in, in journalism, we, we have before fact-checking, we have we call it a moment of, 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 of doubt. We never deal with any word. Whenever we receive word on anything, we class it as fake up until proven or fact-checked. And then he said the question, which I missed as well. He thanks. The next question is thanking Dar al Mustafa, Habib Umar, and for the invitation and for holding this multaqa. And you can know Habib Umar is not currently feeling unwell. We make dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives him. Afiyah. My first question is for Habib Ali in the topic which he spoke on. You are a, a, a very well known individual and the question is about social media he's saying social media now has more impact than the member the member the pulpit when we attend friday prayers and lessons we're not interested we see people are not interested sleeping or distracted up until they hear the imam say stand up or they hear the iqamah then they stand up if you were to ask that person what did you understand from the um from the khutbah they would never be able to tell you what do they say it's, they scratch their head and they say hmm we don't know but ask them what has been what 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 did the celebrity say what has been sent today on whatsapp what message has been received yes the original ruling our trans of transport means of transmission of information should be the pulpit but now we live in the time where social media or these medias are a lot more effective what do we what do we do and the first individual who spoke about podcasts and radios we asked we, uh, 
If we, if we compare it to social media, or other websites, in comparison to the usage of the data on webs on social other social media platforms other than podcasts and radios, then we find there's a huge difference as well in favor of social media. And the question is, how do we, um, but there is a growing interest in podcasts and so on. So how do we grow with that? And how do we facilitate its growth? And he thanks everyone. Okay. 
الصلاه والسلام عبد الرغيب العطاس جامعة الوسطية مسائل موجه الحلال الجفري طبعا نعرف انه عصرنا هذا منذ اكثر من 100 سنة عصر يحكمه الرأسمالي تحكمه التغنية المعاصرة وهذا العصر يديره من يريد ان يديره هو هو يديره العقل الاوروبي العقل الغربي العقل الذي ينتج الحضارة المعاصرة هذا العقل الذي ينتج هذه الحضارة المعاصرة انتج كل المفاهيم الثقافية اللي نتعامل معها اليوم في واقعنا الثقافي في واقعنا الاعلامي بل في واقعنا الاكاديمي اذا نحن امه قد قزينا والقلب قد وصل الى بيوتنا كلها وحتى ما يتكلم عنه الشيخ عبد القادر هو هذه حالات نادره جدا السؤال المطروح هل نحن الان نحن نبحث طبعا العنوان هذا عنوان رائع العنوان بحد ذاته عنوان الفعاليه ذا بحد ذاته هو اصلا يعني مخرج مخرج لهذا اللقاء إذا إذا تضمن مجموعة من التوصيات كبرنامج عمل. لكن السؤال الموضوع كيف نواجه هذه الثقافة؟ هل لدينا قاموس ثقافة إسلامية معاصرة تواجه هذه القاموس الثقافات الموجودة؟ حتى نحن أحيانا نردد مصطلحاتهم، نتكلم عن العلمانية ونتكلم عن عن الحداثة، إذا نحن نردد مصطلحاتهم، فهل بالإمكان أن ننتج واقع ثقافي إسلامي جديد؟ نجد خطاب حتى الحديث عن المحتوى، انا اقول خطبه الحبيب عمر، كلمه الحبيب عمر في في الزياره اول امس هي محتوى علم جديد. اين الاعلاميين؟ فلندرس خطبه فلنعيد هذه الكلمه ونراجعها ونصنع منها محتوى علمي جديد والعفو لكم. جزاك الله خير. طيب لما نختم به، تفضل. وانت الختام. الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاه والسلام. اوصي كل اعلامي ان يكون عنده ثقه بنفسه. إذا كان الإنسان يظهر في الإعلام ولا يوجد عنده ثقة من الداخل ويقين فأنا أوصي كل إعلامي وأنا رأيت في الإعلام قوة الشخصية قوة الشخصية are participating they're adding on thoughts and some are asking questions the questions are mainly addressed to Harib Ali Jifri and Harib Ali Jifri will be responding and inshallah there should be word from Sayyid Al-Habib Umar following قبل أن نجيب على الأسئلة هناك تقرير عن مؤسسة المدينة للإنتاج الإعلامي وهي من المؤسسات الإعلامية المساندة لدار المصطفى سنأخذ هذا التقرير ثم بعدها إن شاء الله تفرز الأسئلة ويجيب كل مسؤول عن سؤال. Now there will be a short video played before the answers and once the video has been played then إن شاء الله the um, the answers will be uh, the questions will be answered بإذن الله. الحمد لله الذي بنعمته تتم الصالحات ما يفتح الله للناس من رحمة فلا ممسك لها الآن نحن في مركز المدينة الانتاج والتوزيع الإعلامي بمدينة تريم على أعتاب السنة العاشرة 
منذ إعادة هيكلة المركز وذلك في 15/7 من العام 2011. خلال التسع سنوات الماضية بفضل الله وتوفيقه ورعايته استطاع المركز أن يحقق الكثير من النجاحات في مختلف المجالات سواء الجانب الإنتاجي أو جانب النشر والتسويق والبث للبرامج المنتجة للمركز أو غيرها من الجوانب الأخرى المرتبطة بالمركز وبطبيعة عمله. قبل أن أتحدث عن التجربة العملية لمركز المدينة دعونا نشاهد وإياكم رسالة وروية ومبادئ المركز فهي الأساس التي قام من أجلها المركز وبموجبها رسمت استراتيجية المركز التي عملنا عليها منذ البداية ولا زلنا إلى الآن نعمل عليها إذا أردنا الحديث عن النجاح اللي تحقق في جانب الإنتاج التلفزيوني اللي هي أساسا مهمة المركز فخلال التسع سنوات الماضية استطاع المركز أن ينتج أكثر من 60 برنامج تلفزيوني معظم الإنتاجات هذه من 30 حلقة طبعا ومتعددة ومتنوعة القوالب الفنية منها الإلقائي منها الحواري منها الوثائقي منها الميداني وغيرها من القوالب الفنية الأخرى معظم الإنتاجات هذه كانت مميزة في مستواها الفني أفردت لكل البرامج هذه هويات مرئية أفردت لها هويات مسموعة توزيع موسيقية بمعايير أقرب للعالية أبرز الإنتاجات هذه اللي أنتجها المركز خلال تسع سنوات برنامج القصص الحق المتخصص في تناول وعرض القصص الواردة في القرآن الكريم نحن الآن وصلنا إلى الموسم التاسع بحمد الله أيضا البرنامج الآخر برنامج معاني ودلالات نحن لازلنا مستمرين في إنتاجه وصلنا الآن تقريبا الموسم السادس كل موسم 48 حلقة هذا البرنامج متخصص بشرح القرآن الكريم برامج أخرى أيضا وثائقية مرتبطة باليمن وغيرها مرتبطة بمناطق أخرى غير اليمن مميزة في محتواها في طريقة عرضها بث الكثير من هذه الرحلات على قنوات فضائية وعدد من الرحلات لا زال العمل جاري فيها وإن شاء الله خلال الفترة القادمة يتم الانتهاء منها وبثها إن شاء الله طبعا المشاريع الاستراتيجية اللي يشتغل عليها المركز الآن والحمد لله حققت نجاح كبير وتأثير في الواقع مشروع العمرية ومبادرة العمرية المتخصصة في المقاطع القصيرة لحيد عمر بن حفيظ وفي الاقتباسات والتصاميم وبشكل عام يعني هي متخصصة في الحيد عمر عبارة عن أشياء بسيطة يسهل وصولها وتقبلها من المتابع ومن المشاهد المشروع الآخر أكاديمية سند الأكاديمية المتخصصة في التعليم وهي عبارة عن جامعة إلكترونية عن بعد متخصصة بمنهج دار المصطفى للدراسات الإسلامية الآن تقريبا لنا ما يقارب السنة من إطلاق هذه الأكاديمية والحمد لله يعني في سنتها الأولى وحققت نجاح ومتابعة وتفاعل كبير من مختلف أنحاء العالم طبعا نحن لازلنا في المرحلة الأولى من مراحل الأكاديمية اللي تشتمل على خمس مراحل المرحلة الأولى انتجناها وأطلقناها باللغة العربية والخطة عندنا الآن أنه تكون باللغة الإنجليزية وأيضا باللغة 
الملايو وان شاء الله ربنا يكتب لها التوفيق والقبول والنفع ان شاء الله جانب النشر والبث للبرامج هذه الحمد لله استطعنا أن نصل إلى ما يقارب العشرين قناة فضائية منها القنوات اليمنية وفي قنوات أخرى عربية وطموحنا طبعا سواء في الجانب الإنتاجي أو في جانب النشر والتوزيع أن نصل إلى عدد أكبر يعني وخطتنا المرسومة خلال الفترة الماضية أن نصل إلى قنوات ذات متابعة جماهيرية أكبر وقنوات مثل ما يقولوا مرموقة لكن سبحان الله يعني الوضع اللي مر في المركز من بداية تأسيسه إلى الآن الأزمات والأحداث اللي شهدها اليمن واللي شهدها الوطن العربي بشكل عام أثرت نوعا ما على المركز وسير عمله لكن فوق هذا كله الحمد لله يعني استطاع المركز في ظل هذه الأزمات واللي يعني على مستوى بس حضرموت نحن على مستوى اليمن عشرات المراكز طبعا أقفل وجمد نشاطها لكن نحن في مركز المدينة رغم الأزمات هذه استطعنا أنه نصمد مش بس أنه نصمد أنه نواصل الإنتاج وأنه نتطور وأنه نحقق نجاحات في ظل هذه الأزمات والأحداث ونسأل الله إن شاء الله زوالها ولو أزيلت نتوقع أنه العمل بيتوسع الانطلاقة بتكون أسرع إن شاء الله طبعا إذا أردنا الحديث عن سر نجاح المركز فسر ذلك يعود إلى توفيق الله سبحانه وتعالى وفضله ويعود إلى رعاية ودعاء مشايخنا حفظهم الله في مقدمتهم سيد الحب عمر بن حفيظ وسيد الحجهاتهم لنا لما وصلنا إلى هذا النجاح طبعا الأهداف والأمنيات لهم في المركز كبيرة جدا وما تم تحقيقه يعتبر جزء بسيط جدا من الأهداف اللي هم راسمينها واللي يتمنون تحقيقها من المركز في الواقع وربنا إن شاء الله يوفقنا أنه نحقق ما نستطيع تحقيقه من أهدافهم الكبيرة ومن فتح على نفسه باب نية صالحة فتح الله له سبعين بابا من أبواب التوفيق الجانب الإداري طبعا اللي يمشي عليه المركز واللي رسم من أول لحظات تأسيس المركز كان سبب رئيسي في نجاح المركز فنحن من أول لحظات تأسيس المركز ونحن عارفين إيش اللي بنعمله إيش اللي بنعمله أساسا ومن أين سنبدأ وإلى أين سنصل وإيش العقبات اللي يتوقع أنها تعترضنا وكيف أنه نتغلب عليها فبفضل هذه الاستراتيجية استطعنا أنه نختصر المسافات واستطعنا أنه نصل للأهداف المرسومة لنا نكهة وبهار مثل ما يقولوا نجاح المركز هم الشباب اللي موجودين في المركز والعاملين في المركز اللي نعتبرهم نحن العنصر الأساسي والعمود اللي قام عليه نجاح المركز طبعا الشباب اللي موجودين في المركز جميعهم متخصصين إعلام ودارسين إعلام وكمان عندهم من الإبداع وعندهم من المواهب في الجانب الإعلامي الشيء الكثير وهذا الشيء يتجسد في الإنتاجات اللي أنتجها المركز والتميز في الإنتاجات هذه والإبداع وهذه الإنتاجات هي الدليل والشاهد على إبداع وتميز هؤلاء الشباب فنسأل الله سبحانه وتعالى على أن يوفقنا إن شاء الله أن نستمر في أداء الرسالة المرسومة للمركز وأن نحقق النجاحات ونحقق الأهداف اللي رسموها لنا مشايخنا There was, a, there was many participations, but not many questions. So the first one was, what about the people? What's the advice for those who don't have TVs in their homes and avoid it? Habib Bakr answered, he said, it is best for them to remain upon what they are. And that they did not put a TV into their house, which they're not in need of. If they can use sound, Though things without visual or something which is auditory would be better if they wanted to bring in something. Uh, 
um, or a person or can you also if you want to use it for uh, for for lectures and for lessons then get pre-recorded stuff and display it on somewhere which there's no constant stream of uh, media that would be the advice of Habib Abu Bakr it's still uh, It would be the best, and my advice would be that they continue upon what they are without introducing a TV or them into their TV, and, and, and without introducing into their homes. Um, and then understanding what they want, if it's uh, lessons, if it's, and then if something must come in, then something which is auditory and not visual. Um, visuals will have a, a deeper impact on the family and on the children. So now, the question, which is exactly <laughs> the question that he's uh, he said, the similar question is, if someone was, if there's a woman who was wearing a hijab, and then they were said, because there's thousands and thousands of people who are not wearing hijabs anymore, is it permissible for her? Should she take off her hijab? Then we say, you know, does it, you know, if everyone else is doing, it, if there's no need, if there's if there's no nothing for it, there's no um, uh, even if thousands of people are doing it. Um, then um, we still, you know, just continue. We, we would, that would be the advice. That would always be the advice. And he's moving on to the next question. It says the issue is is receiving word from there. A lot of people put on word and the, from the truth and. Um, beneficial things they put it on there um, but the issue which we're facing in society is it's how that is being received and how it's being used and, and if the da'wah if, if no one has the means of da'wah through media then it should be better the 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 the, the individual da'wah just like Sheikh Yahya Rodas was mentioning about his father his mother who came sat at the presence there was no general or collective it wasn't a huge uh, effort of da'wah in terms of congregational but it was an individual endeavor so that would be ideal for those who are not don't feel safe on the internet and its um, and its evils and that would be advisable to focus on individual face to uh, face to face or individual interaction dawa This, this, this topic is a really important topic, he says. And we, this has been one multaqa here in Dar al-Mustafa, but we need more and more multaqas like this around the world and discuss upon taking steps. And we will see shortly, within the next few years, a huge change. The question was from a sister who was asking, who studied from home, an open university, and who's graduated. And she's asking, would you advise me to get a job with my degree, which I've just earned, to go out there um, and work? Um, 
and he, he and he mentions that um, the best case and and the best upon her and upon her endeavors in her religious commitment would be if she has studied at home that she finds um, uh, that she, that she tries to also work from home as well. That would be ideal unless there's um, there's a d direct need and then um, building upon that in in how she goes ahead with it. Hayr Umar says, the uh, a media center, an outlet media center, which has already begun, that we discussed on the first night, and now there's already been steps taken to to bring it, and to bring it out, which will work on um, preparing those who are working in the, they have their roles in media they have their roles on tv or they have roles and particularly there are steps in how we there would be offering guidance to children as well and to those who are um turning into teenagers and harabakar also said and her quoting him he said we also need we need many programs which need to uh which need to take place which we can result into which can result to what has been resulted to in this gathering that we can reach in this gathering and how we can um, 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 uh, better our lives um, as we go ahead with it. The question is about social media and devices for children. Hayu Bakr says, the, the family should know the dangers of the device. And then using guidance to use the device when there's a need and only using it for when there's a need to use it. Even we're not just talking about a way which is safe to use it in terms of the protecting or safeguarding their, um, their, their, their morals and values as, and religious commitments. No, we're even talking about um, um, uh, safety from actual illnesses that actually take place. So if this phone is going to lead them to have um, personal disorders, personal emotional um, uh, impacts on them. Um, so there needs to be a com only when there's a need to use it, and when there's a need to use it, there must be guidance upon how it's being used. Um, if, they, if if it's already gotten into the hands of the children with a device, and the third is that it is it is upon the parents to warn against the dangers that TV and media internet imposes on your faith. He said to me, one man said to me, you live in a world of delusion. You see the people who come to you who are all religiously committed, but you don't see the people who they leave at home. And if you want to correct the affairs of people, then you need to go and mix in and go even further detailed into people's lives and communities. The only people who come to you, the only people where you guys are, people come to you and the people who come to you, the people who already have religious commitments. We, and that's true, we need to have a stance against these people who are polluting the minds of our children. They are affecting our, the minds of our children. When I, when I heard that, I now then had an opportunity to speak about it, me and Habib Umar and the other Habaib, to continue. Now we have another path to now enter into it, which is this uh, multaqa and how we can. And the parents should monitor. If, and it's possible that if a child starts using something on the internet or online and then it, it can impact their receptivity to the parents guidance um, and then he and then he said there are many people who then end up having um, from a young age having um, issues with themselves um, being insecure um, having depression suffering from depression these children at young age so this has this poses impacts and effects on us from all aspects religious health emotional mental so uh, the advice would be to 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 av avoid it completely um, 
it is it is mentioned that the brother from America spoke about his parents that their mom and dad are disbelievers. They, they weren't Muslims. How did they? How were they impacted on just one gathering? That was just one gathering. But but what I mean from here is there was a level of internal preparation. There was also a manner in which the information, the medium, which was Habib Umar, where it was presented to them and there was readiness from in them. And this internet and these devices are ruining that readiness. We need, to, we need to bring out guidances and we need to collectively work together in, in working together in, uh, in decreasing the impacts that it has. So now we go ahead with the questions of Habib Ali al Jifri. And he's asking how he would like the, uh, the questions once or, at once or one by one. And Habib Ali said, question, question. The first three questions. One, I didn't uh, understand that question. Apologies. Let's go ahead with just translating, inshallah, what Habib Ali says. Apologies for the. With, he thanks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless the presence of Habib Umar and Habib Bakr who attended and and uh, they they attended during I, I should not be here I, they entered while I was speaking and I, and I wasn't aware and it, I see it wrong for me to speak in front of them and may Allah increase them in health and give them long life and good health so as for the questions Saeed al-Bathati who asked the questions he said, it is possible that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Maybe that something can be said. Maybe he asked this question and maybe something could be said and hopefully the, uh, my mashayikh here present can make, can make, can make dua for me. The first point which I want to mention is There are, um, in terms of um, the Prophet ﷺ teaches us that there's, uh, wisdom is, is, is not proper to a believer. He said there's, a, there's, there's, there's two different ways in which uh, the philosophy of media is foundation upon. Um, one is a reaction. It's, it's, a it's a reaction. And the other one is upon character and upon good wishes for everyone majority of what happens so and and what is displayed and what is spread on the media in, in its different uh, in its different uh, uh, portals it, it's more receptive to the um, the one to which resonates on the one who acts upon it as a a, a, rea a reaction, and and not to resonate with the person of um, of of character etiquette. And, 
and uh, they, they, the, those I, I have had much experience with the people of uh, with the presenters and um, presenters and, 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 and TV shows and and what I see from that is very few of the ones which I have experienced in the world of media and um, what I have experienced is that the the whole important or the, the the emphasis and what the world is moving towards shedding light on is upon the mutagayirat upon the things which are changing or subjected to change and with the world which is changing nothing and very little is spoken about how um, f to talk about foundations, to talk about morals, to talk about values, to talk about uh, uh, commitments, to talk about the personal developments, to talk about um, closest to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It says that media is a, uh, it, it brings out, it brings out, manifests, exposes what's the reality behind the people behind the media who are pushing, who are pushing it forward. So, and I mean, because there are many, many people who um, I sit with before the, before the, before the gathering. And it's, a, and it's a, someone who is a well etiquette role model. And then once the camera is on, it's completely different. And the way they were praised from before to how they've become in the gathering um, or in the, or the, the interview, which is broadcasted live or recorded, it wouldn't be the same. And then they'll say, no, this is, of course. And when I, I, I inquired into it, they said, this is what my workplace want me to do. This is what I should, this is my, this is work, basically. Apologies, there was uh, some translation missing from that question. So he's going back to the question where the best or the, the best um, um, outlet should be the member, should be the pulpit of, me, of, of media, the member. So how can we bring those two together? So he, uh, Adiba Shatter, in his, he, he says that I've listened to his lectures and uh, and they are really good uh, academical lectures of Adib. So let, let, let me agree and disagree. I said, I agree with you that these media or these means of, of, of spreading uh, media is the one which is quickly spread, but it's not the most efficient. There's a big difference between what spreads fast and what is more active or what is more positive and more deeper and what is more important. The example that you have given upon the reality of this, of this, of this matter, this is, this is a reality which we need to re-gaze upon our khatibs and those who give the khutbahs that he doesn't go for too long. And that the Prophet ﷺ said that the person that is wisdomous, that the person doesn't extend or make long their, their khutbah, and that he feels the pain of other people, that he doesn't go on for too long, that it becomes meaningful, that it becomes, we need to go back and rebrand or relook. We don't need to move forward and remove what's behind. We need to go back and gain the right understanding from Sayyidina Rasulullah, from the Messenger of Allah ﷺ, and then bring that to fix the solutions of today. And one said, he says to one of the scholars of Syria, and he said, I'm shocked about you guys. And he said, you... So it's um, here is the issue. The, the, the issue is 
the importance of the 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 change that needs to be done for the khatib, the one who gives the khutbah, but not the importance of the khutbah, the, not the importance of the member. That shouldn't be what should be reconsidered here. It's important. So the, the individual who from Syria who's speaking to scholars is saying, you know, you have, you know, I, you have half an hour, perhaps more every week where everyone has to come and has to listen to you. Uh, you know, and, and, and then there's so much change and there's no one accepting. It's not, again, let's not reconsider the member or the importance of the member within that Islamic tradition, but we need to reconsider and we need to relook and gaze and re-equip ourselves with the tools that we need to better facilitate the outlet, which is the member. There are studies that show that that, that there would be that there would be less people using social media due to less um, trust in it. Meaning in, in studies which show somehow that um, the way it is going now, people are being, uh, some, some people are using internet less because of how much lies and how much things are being spread. So this world in the time where Europe was affected or impacted, which is the time of the revolution and then, and, and then onwards from then onwards, that now the world is in a time where um, this, these philosophies are now falling. So before it was like the, the, the medieval, then it was the revolution, and then it's moved on to this, 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 modern, this sort of modernity um, um, uh, practice. And now th these now all the, the, the places of, um, of academic studies, they're now focusing on now the falling of these mainstream ideologies. What I mean by that is that they will always will begin and they will come to an end. Do not, do not underestimate and do not allow us to be to be ashamed of our tradition, of our Islamic tradition, and how the, the, the outlets and the points of media that the Messenger of Allah has taught us with. And Habib Bakr mentions that there, even though there are a few people around the scholars, but there are a lot of people who are where, the, where, there's, where the, 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 it's not reaching. And what happens is if we don't make it on time, what happens is um, a reaction, which is the reaction which is the most common nowadays is disbelief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is atheism, no, no religion, no belief in a God. And that's not because of, that's against the natural fitrah, it's, natural, it's against our natural states, but because it's a reaction from being neglected or being uh, whether they've had no care or no love. Um, then it moves to uh, this reaction, which is um, um, leaving faith. This is exactly what Habib Umar mentioned. That that you know that that we, even though no matter how difficult the situation is, we don't neglect these fundamental principles. Which Habib, we cannot. Um, no matter what happens. We have in our tradition ways media has been spreaded and its fundamentals and its principles. No matter how much, how big social media grows and no matter how multi, how variant the different portals are and the platforms are, that will never ever give us sufficiency over the ones which are in our tradition, which the Messenger of Allah وسلم, has taught us and has given us through the message from the last revelation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And how Umar mentions in the night, which on the opening night, how it's being used now, this meat is being used for gains and for um, the... It reminds me of, I was in a gathering once with one uh, of the... Uh, with a, when, I was, when I was leaving... I, and they wanted to give me an envelope of money, so I said, "I'm sorry, I, I don't, I don't take money for, for 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 lectures or for speeches and things. I don't take money." So then the person stopped, and then they followed me up until I left, and then they went, took me to a place where it's just me and him, and then he said, "Here you go," and then I and then he, and I said, "Did you not hear what I said earlier?" And he said, "No, I thought there was people around, so you didn't want me to give you the envelope then, but now there's no one around, I can give you this." And then and then he said, and then I. And then um, I said, no, I still don't want it. And then he was like, no, no, I was just joking. But what, what was here, the point which I'm mentioning is he was shocked. He, was, he couldn't understand or recollect that I, I chose not to, that I chose not to. 
So, and he was absolutely shocked by the uh, um, by me not wanting it either outwardly or inwardly, or in public or in private. So, so there's, there's there's a whole um, move because it's become a point where the the states have changed. Um, our dealings have changed. And once we, as other scholars, for example, start accepting these gains and start making that the main purpose, then we are all um, falling under the same umbrella. So the most, the people who, uh, the people who attack us the most within our faith and within our tradition, So the, the connection paused and we missed that, uh, that, that second. So freedom of expression never used to be an issue with, it, with the Muslim tradition. Umar bin al-Khattab, he was on the minbar and then a woman stood up and she said to him, she said, you are wrong and you are wrong. She, she, she expressed, she used her right of freedom of expression to Umar bin al-Khattab, the leader of the believers. And at the end of the gathering, Umar bin al-Khattab said, the lady is, was the truth and Umar uh, made a mistake. So there's never been a problem within our tradition with regards to freedom of expression. But now what's happened is how it's, how it's been used and how it's been used to change people into different sects and to different groups. And this is what happened when, um, when uh, as particularly when the secretarism began and there was, uh, when the, the, when the, ch the, ch the schools of the, 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 the different uh, churches of school decided to remove religion from politics and to remove uh, religion from law. And then again, these sort of ideas began the, 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 the French, again, the French revolution and the revolutionists. So these things which have began and taken place upon the words of freedom of expression is now being used. It's not, there's nothing wrong within our traditional freedom of expression. It's just that it has been used for political, economical uh, gains. gains. So now when we're talking about Denmark and what happened in Denmark, what happened? I was talking to Sheikh Bouti, the, the martyr. He said the, the journalist, the, the, the newspaper which spread the, the, mess, the pictures of the messenger of Allah, and then, they ref, and, then, and then they sent another article and they apologized for it. And then I mentioned it to Sheikh. I, I wanted to show that, you know, they've, they've, apolo they've apologized. And then, you know, we can now work with that. They've, they've, uh, they've apologized. So he said, we're not, we're not going to accept any sort of change. Um, to to uh, to accept that sort of apology up until their leader, or their prime minister, apologizes to the Muslims, and then we said that's not that's not going to be possible. This you know this is a journalist, this is like a newspaper, and this is and that's the prime minister. And then what happened is when the situation sort of died out, there was a there was a company which produced butter, and um, they offered um, they, they 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 made it to the journalist uh, to, to this paper to this newspaper that they would um, cut all sort of uh, um, payments. Uh, or they will end some sort of transaction that was in between them. And then that's when the, the, the head of the newspaper or, uh, or uh, higher authority, I missed that exact point, came out with an apology. So we missed the... We missed the beginning of the story, but we'll just join in from wherever we can. So 
فاتركه لاجل التلفاز او التشويه او الحمله لا ينبغي ان يشغلنا ذلك عن مهمتنا وجزاكم الله خيرا and uh, habib ali uh, thanks everyone and he asks for habib uh, umar and habib ali uh, to forgive him for his for his in, in, for him to add anything into this in, in their presence and the sheikh mukhtar makes dua and that they said now they'll be heading out towards to having the closing ceremony of this multaqa which will be live on irth al-nabawi where there will be speeches um, it also be broadcasted on other channels online and it's also on Harir Umar and Harir Bakar and Harir Umar's Facebook page and his Twitter page and then it will start off with Nasheeds and it will be starting with Nasheeds and then Nasheed uh, artist now will begin the Nasheed تكون الآن قراءة التوصيات يلقيها السيد الداعية محمد بن أحمد بن سميت فليتفضل بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم توصيات ملتقى الدار الرابع عشر بدار المصطفى بتريم دعسات إسلامية المنعقد قناه الارث النبوي ويزكيهم ويعلمهم من الاهتمام والاعتناء ما يمكنه من ايصال رسالته اليه تقويما وتعديلا وايصال رسالته به نشرا وتوصيلا لذلك حرص القائمون على الملتقى الرابع عشر بدار المصطفى والذي يحمل عنوان حسن توظيف الوسيلة للمقاصد الجليلة الإعلام انموذجا على توجيه اهتمامه نحو الإعلام من حيث أنه وسيلة تتبوأ ذروة الأهمية والخطورة ومن خلال سبر ما تم تداوله والتذاكر فيه في جلسات الملتقى من أبحاث خلصنا إلى عدد من التوصيات وإليكم بيانها أولا بذل الوسع في إظهار الديم الإسلام ومبادئه في وسائلنا الإعلامية فالكلمة أمانة ثانيا تسخير وسائل الإعلام والتواصل الاجتماعي للتقريب والتوفيق والتكامل بين التلقي العلم الأصيل العريق الشرعي الذي تقوم به الأربطة والمعاهد التعليمية التربوية وبين مواقع ووسائل التعليم المستحدث والأكاديمي ثالثا إن الحفاظ على لغة القرآن الكريم من أهم واجبات الإعلام فيتأكد على الإعلام أن يتخلص من ازدواجية العامية مع الفصحى فإن ترك الفصحى في منصات الإعلام يؤدي إلى نسف الدعامات الثقافية لمجتمعنا رابعا نشر ما يبعث على الطمأنينة والسكينة في القلوب وخصوصا في أوقات الشدائد والأزمات خامسا ضرورة تفعيل التواصل والتكامل والتنسيق بين الإعلاميين والدعاء سادسا تعزيز مبدأ التثبت في نقل الأخبار والأحداث والتأني في تصديقها والتصدي لبيان زيف ما ينشر من الشائعات والأخبار المخالفة للواقع أو الأفكار المضللة سابعا أهمية البحث عن مصادر للمعلومات الصحيحة لصناعة محتوى إعلامي هادف بشكل موضوعي ملخص يحقق أهدافه ثامنا ضرورة تضافر المعالجات العقلية والشرعية على تقويم أخطاء الإعلام تاسعا السعي لإقامة المركز الإعلامي المقترح والذي فعل بإطلاق بعض الصفحات على الفيسبوك والآن الصفحات تحت الإنشاء عاشرا التأكيد على النهوض بمواقع الإلكترونية التي تخدم منهج الإسلام الوسطي وأداء دورها العالمي 
وأخيرا تداعي الإعلاميين المسلمين إلى الانتهاض بمهمتهم الإعلامية وقيمهم المثالية وإيصالهم جمالها إلى غير المسلمين ودعوتهم القابلة من الإعلاميين من غير المسلمين إلى التكاتف على تلك القيم النافعة للإنسانية وكما أشار سيد الحي وبكر حفظه الله تعالى بأن كل نقطة من هذه التوصيات فيما بعد تحتاج لتوضيح آلية تنفيذها ومتابعة تطبيقها ولذلك كما أشار سيد الحي عمر حفظه الله تعالى يحتاج عقد ملتقيات مصغرة تكون امتدادا لهذا الملتقى وفقنا الله وإياكم ما يحبه ويرضاه وصلى الله وسلم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه والتابعين والحمد لله رب العالمين جزاكم الله كل خير ونبقى مع كلمات الضيوف يقدمها الشيخ محمد ياسر القضماني جزاه الله خيرا الحمد لله وصلى الله على سيدنا رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه نحمد الله سبحانه وتعالى على ما يسر وسهل وأعان وأتى بنا إلى هذا الصرح المبارك وأسأل الله تبارك وتعالى أن نكون قد قمنا بشيء مما تعين علينا من بحث نافع وعطاء يفيد إن أمتنا هي الأمة الوحيدة التي تعرض مبادئها وتعرض أهم فروعها خمس مرات في اليوم والليلة على الملأ وهو ما يكون بالأزان للدعوة للصلوات الخمس هذا الحال الذي أقامنا الله فيه يعين علينا أن نحترم هذه الوسائل بحيث ندخل فيها مرشدين ونافعين وعارضين لهذه الأمانة التي ألقاها الله على أعتاقنا وصدق الله تبارك وتعالى وقل اعملوا فسير الله عملكم ورسوله والمؤمنون وستردون إلى عالم الغيب والشهادة فينبئكم بما كنتم تعملون ونحن حينما ندخل أو نؤسس لمثل هذه الأعمال نستذكر قول نبينا عليه الصلاة والسلام بلغوا عني إنها أمانة وإنها يوم القيامة خز وندامة إن لم نقم بهذا الواجب العظيم غفر الله لنا تفريطنا وأعاننا على أن ننهض بما يحب ويرضى وأشكر لسيدي الحبيب عمر نفعنا الله بحياته هذه الدعوة وتوجهاته الدائمة ونظراته لنا هي التي تعيننا بعد فضل الله تبارك وتعالى على الاستمرار بالعطاء عندما نأتي بشخوصنا ثم نرجع لا ننقطع عن هذه الدار فنحن معها في الليل والنهار ويسأل بعضهم في بلدنا يقول لي إن يعني عندي تلفزيون ماذا أضع من القنوات أقول له عندنا محطة الإرث النبوي دائما هكذا ما يلوح للذهن راجعوا محطة كذا عندنا قناة في حضر موت فنسأل الله سبحانه وتعالى أن يبارك هذه الجهود وأن ينفعنا جميعا وأن يسامحنا على ما كان من تقصير إنه أكرم الأكرمين وأرحم الراحمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وآله وصحبه أجمعين والعفو جزاكم الله خير الجزاء كانت هناك كلمة لسيد الحبيب أبي بكر المشهور 
ولكنه غادر لظرف صحي نبقى مع مسك الختام وكلمة شيخنا والدنا سيد الحبيب عمر بن محمد بن سالم الحفيظ فليتفضل جزاه الله خيرا الحمد لله على توفيقه وتيسيره وتسديده وتأييده. And we bear witness that there is no god but Allah and that Muhammad is his messenger. And and in the closing ceremony, the remarks that the guests have spoken, Sheikh Yasir, Sheikh Muhammad Yasir Qudmani. He reminded me of the adhan that the fuqaha of Islam refer to as that it is in, in, in linguistically it is a, an announcement or an, a, a media or a medium. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made the adhan a sacred symbol of the ummah and, he, and it is mentioned that what our religion has made a form of act of worship that we proclaim this sacred symbol in the morning and in the night upon creation and everyone and what we understand in meanings from that is that every time we occupy ourselves with media it should be explanation of the words which are in the adhan so this is medium and in general incomplete with this adhan so any media which is established upon this adhan it will teach us from whatever is folded within it its results and its fruits that we break down its meanings that it does not leave our role or our role and it does not stop in these meanings it should never we should never stop giving that comp that commentary of the two shahada and hayya ala salah and hayya ala falah and the takbir upon our word. all meanings of good in all in all affairs of media it retains it returns back to the words that imam al-haddad would refer to as he would say i wish or i would love to if I was to find an opportunity to find so that I can give a commentary on the words in the Adhan and that I would make that I would make it in a book by itself Imam Haddad used to wish he would show the Ummah the meanings of this this transmission these words the Adhan and media and portals of communication and proclaiming act and and declare what you have been ordered to and do not be afraid of the mushrikeen so that plants firmly within us that the, the, the acceptance that we are in the methodology of allah the complete uh, and the religion of allah it's complete religion and the complete methodology that encompasses, that is wide, that is vast, that we are in need and everyone and all ummas and nations before us and after us are all in need. I'm talking about the non-Muslims. The, the, the non We're all in need of understanding this methodology, this religion, this path, this this uh, this i'lan this medium or this uh, was proclaimed we are all in need of it and what has fallen upon them from reactions as we have heard that their actions were based upon reactions whatever is good that's from it if there's any good 
in media or anything which is good, then the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam has already taught us. And there's no doubt about it. And there's no uh, uh, uncertainty about it from nearness or from far. That if there is a good commandment for the Ummah, then from our revelation, from the revelation of the one who is aware of what's hidden and what is hidden from people and what is public, the religion which he has revealed to his beloved, the trustworthy, that we can find everything and it has everything. We heard the words of the Ustad Yahya Rodas that from our priorities in life that we take these causes and that we use it properly and then we do not allow these portals to use us or to use from us so us with our humanity at first number one our humanity then secondly our faith and our religiosity and nothing and it is more exalted than it to be used by creation we will never be used except for allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the one who makes the world move for us it is clear in front of the eyes and in the intellect and that which my minds can understand that the time right now that it can be understood now or it could be understood later after time has gone past through the different changes which occur from the time from before or from the time the minds will always come to understand the amazement the amazing affair of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's assistance to muhammad and what muhammad has come with sallallahu alayhi wa and the truth that he was sent with and that he sallallahu alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam even the one who aimed to change ideas and change character and change the path through different means in the end of her life. She led to the awakening of many hearts and many minds. And when coming towards the end of her life, with in 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 in, in evil and uh, that no one finds a way out except from the good word and the word of and the good character from the sunnas or the ways of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that nothing comes to an end or nothing is given extended or delayed or no evil is given prevalence or shown or spread around the whole world in its different times except that that when time is extended and the gaze is extended everyone comes to the to the to the conviction and understanding that Allah subhanahu Allah's word that says inna lanunsur rusulana that we give victory to our messengers and the people who believe on the day of judgment on the day that the disbelievers or the wrongdoers their excuses won't benefit them and they have the eternal abode in in hell life. The same way that Sheikh Ustad uh, Yahya said in, in understanding the affair, this worldly affair with all its different types, which he gave a beautiful example, Sheikh Yahya, that, that what the world is grown, where people eat from and uh, livestock eat from till it gets to a point where it has just become beautiful and that everyone thinks that they have control over it, that the Amr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reaches it so it becomes empty and barren as if there was nothing there yesterday. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is the way we explain the ideas or these, the verses, the clear proofs for those who will think. And then we follow the verse after that and we say, uh, we, we mention the, 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 the firmness or, and the steadfastness of and, and the establishing and the depth for those who has used media with the high values with beautiful morals morals on top of morals and honor on top of honor 
using the light of the Quran, which is given into the hearts of this person, that they again become, that they're able to see that when it comes to see the light which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has grazed with it, this, this sight which, which captures it and the mind which captures what the eye is seeing and then the mind or the heart, the heart catches and understands that which has happened, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allah calls to the, to, the, to the house of peace. And that's the verse following the verse Yahya Yahya mentioned. And he guides whoever he wants to the right path, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. So when we see this verse, when we look and contemplate upon this verse, we see clear proofs. Two paths, da'wah, calling to Allah, and guidance, hidayah. And through the bounty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah has allowed us mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we are from the perspective of da'wah, where we give da'wah to Dar es Salaam, where we call to Dar es Salaam, only through the strength which Allah has given us and through whichever whichever means which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us, members and, and, and collective works and different portals, we collectively call to Dar es Salaam, which is Jannah. This is our priority and our aim as Muslims and the guidance is from Allah. Allah calls to the Dar es Salaam and Allah guides whoever he wants to the right path. So the one honors themselves, the believer honor themselves or the person or the believer who is in media is particularly that they are in this honor, this, this mixture of calling to the, to the house of peace. The prophets call to the house of peace. The seal of the prophets calls to the, the, to the house of peace. The scholar calls to the house of peace. The one in media, the Muslim who is in the media calls to Dar es Salaam. The, the believer who is sincere calls to the house of peace. And how beautiful is that what is produced from these? It comes from prophets, from messages, then to scholars, then to those who are working in media and to those who are here. And everyone who is sincere from the people or believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who wants to seek and give help to the ummah. Let's stand and let's give us this, let's have this take on this crown. And let's, let's participate in this da'wah, this call to Dar es Salaam, the house of peace. And the same way that we call to Dar es Salaam, that we call to the, to, to the methodology of peace and the ideology of peace and bringing the realities of peace and on spreading peace. And our symbol is peace. And the one who brought this with us to us, our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu and as we continue upon that, on the day of judgment, we fall under those who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, on the day they meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah greets them with salam. Everything that is in front of us that we see, there's nothing more smaller and there's nothing more worthless, more uh, abased when we look at it into the future what is waiting for us where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says for those who did good in this world and more they don't drag their faces in abasement those are the people of paradise they will remain in there forever and we ask you Ya Rabb to make us of those those who did well so we inside excellence you're beautiful and within that who do well is we go shoulder by shoulder in all our different affairs and circumstances in our life that we work together This is, the, this is the origin that what we receive in sitting with the people of Allah, what we receive when we're reciting the book of Allah, what, what we receive when we are practicing upon the sunnahs. These are always the base. We will never get rid of our base, our, found, our foundations. And many of these things are these these paths which bring 
which affect people, which change people, have impact on the people's hearts, we understand that it is a, a string which is pulled towards losing our morals and our values. So once we work and understand better how we should use it, we can see the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in how things are changed and affected through the causes and through the different means upon the, upon the way of what is connected to our normal, our natural state, our distilled innate nature. This is the way of, this is the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and how things can change. And that is upon, that is based upon the spreading of this light through the means of sincerity and trustworthy by sitting and by watching and by gazing and by uh, sitting in the companion, uh, in companionship of the good that leads to with all its different paths it leads to drawing from the fruits or drawing closer those who are far those who are outside of the inner circle to be moved into the inner circle those who have been forgotten to bring to be brought into those uh, who remember and who are remembered so this ihsan that those who did well that we did well did excellent that we know that in the islamic world not just in the islamic world but in everywhere where there are believers and we have we know that there are abundant goods uh, uh, good reward that is given to those in what has reached to them or they're, they're rewarded in what has what has been given to them through different through their families through their classes through the the lectures through the member the pulpits and what's given to them through that that has bought much good we need we want to move this good these 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 portals sitting in classes and books and, and pulpits they plant within us something and we need to continue upon the path to awaken it and sometimes what allows us to, or brings us to neglect that which is implanted within us from the works of the natural natural portals of communication um, which are given to us in Islamic tradition is gazing upon luxuries which brings us to think which look is a luxury on the outside it's an image and as it has made many believers for that this world is that there's nothing that can be done that you know it leads many people to be hopeless about the world how there's so many forces and how so much strength working, plotting against people and people are doing this. And in front of us, we have people uh, on the other side of this battle. There are people who have millions and millions of, uh, of dollars. And once we believe that, I tell you that that is a wrong vision. That is a wrong and you have wrong, then you have wrong again. What you say in these people are having much wealth and plans and plots and we let me tell you of the time where they the people of rome and of persia at their time this is exactly the position that they were in in having fundings for everything having plots them at the time of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and tell me any one of you right now does the ideas or the methodologies or the values or whatever that the people of Rome and the people of Persia had does it remain till now is it something which is practiced upon now and that was only in the faces of the presence of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the messenger tells us that Persia this is the king of well, this is the this is the, the kingdom of Persia and there will be no Persia after this. This is the king of um, um, of, of Rome and there will be no Rome after this. And this dua that the, this the, I mean this call this complete call, which Allah has given the, the the command for and this establishment of prayer, it challenged all these different powers, groups with 
all the different types of, of, of causes and means the, of development and of um, um, development and, and everything and all its affairs, it all failed in front of the da'wah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Wa sallam. He is the one who has given victory and he is the one who has been given assistance. If it wasn't, f gatherings like this would never have happened. Word like this would never have spread that we have been talking and discussing about. But it will continue and it will spread. And what is mentioned here will go and be spread into the lands of the, of, of other, uh, of the Western societies and the Eastern. This is the promise of Allah, and it will not, and it will not, uh, it will never f fail to happen. And that the Messenger of Allah has always be given victory. And our word, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, says it has reached the messengers and the prophets. This is the word of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, that there's no beast or there's no animal in this world apart from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has it by its forehead or has its control and risk. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and I have told the prophets from before that you are our prophets will always be given victory. And that the people or the army or the militants of these prophets will always be the ones who overcome and overpower. So let's hold the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let's not allow these images and these, these, these platforms to allow us to fall far, to fall off from the reality which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explains to us. Let's not allow it to, let's not allow ourselves to lose hope. Let's not allow us to, to venerate everything else. We know that if the light is a manifest, that no darkness will remain. That no darkness, if darkness um, overcompenses, overpowers, We know that if a room is pitch black and we get a tiny little candle, we know that the darkness in that room starts becoming affected and starts becoming weaker. And imagine the sun and imagine the light of the Messenger of Allah وسلم, Let's go with our motivations, with our intentions, with our, um, uh, our hopes. Let's uh, seek excuses for those who said to Habib Abu Bakr, for example, you are living in delusion i would like to say to that in according to you and your understanding and what your perception of this world and your perception from your understanding of what has been fed to you through this then that's the delusion which is there This is this is this is what the the what the people around the prophets will say to the prophets. You be what you, you are about about yourself. If you've seen yourself affected or falling or slipping or falling into a net, if you were to come to one gathering, it would benefit you. Gatherings, la ilaha illallah. Gatherings affect people who have never accepted Islam, who never had any any belief. But here's the issue: you have faced away, and you are gazing upon that. You are those pictures, those desires, those um, vener venerating those. The heart is turned away from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Had you turned to Allah, you would know. That, the, that you would know the true reality to the extent of the delusion that you're living in. You would know the reality of what this da'i or this calling, this one who is calling, uh, the reality which is within them with the truth. He's calling to the truth upon the tongue of the truth in the manner of the truth, a truth which has been sent to the, the, the seal of the prophets who has come with the truth from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that is the best of da'wah. We have accepted this da'wah and we will continue to be upon this 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 and we hear and we accept it. So here we are in need of opening our minds to the truth and to opening it up for guidance, preparing. You've heard words which have been sent, which have been mentioned that they use to affect people and to influence people. And what has been mentioned in the Quran and the Sunnah in the meaning of, of, of influence. We know the influence of 
the fitra, the person's uh, individual character, the uh, forgiving, overlooking, and 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 um, turning the cheek. But but influencing fight and dispute and desires and and wishes is not permissible. It's mamnu within our within our Sharia. We are commanded to avoid everything which leads to calling to uh, to to calling that, and we cannot um, open discussion apart from we speak in that of the best of manners. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to the Prophet, call to the people of your Lord with good word and with wisdom and dispute them or, 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 or just have a discussion with them with that which is good or that which is the best, which doesn't include influencing the nafs or influencing or calling to people's desires or calling to people's envy to wake this up between people. That is not what we do. The, the influence which people need which we need is to influence, to reach and to impact the natural innate, distilled nature, the fitter of the people, which is just to influence that nature of them to return to its creator, to, to, to wake, to, to awaken, to, um, to, to, uh, and to return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for what he has allowed to take place in gatherings. And may Allah bless the, gather, the brothers and those who were um, the brothers who have attended the guests, those who accepted the call, the scholars, the, the teachers, the ones who came to benefit, and everyone who has a hand in um, wanting to protect this religion and to serve this religion, and everyone who has followed from every single place online and from everywhere. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow the effects of this and the impacts of this to have an impact on us and our internal into in our hearts and that it changes us for the small lives that we are in so that we can reach high ranks and we can and i say what we have heard from people in having self-confidence having self that what we hear what we hear from the words of the Salihin to those who follow them all the way to let this, the, the biggest impact which has caused people to become delusions is the confidence that people, the self-confidence. That is not our way. Our confidence is in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And at the same time, our confidence in Allah, we proclaim it with weakness and brokenness. This is the call of the Messenger of Allah وسلم, He said, I complain to you my weakness So what people have brought into their minds And think that self-confidence Is what, what, what brings the person and advance the persons It will end up severing your tie from the Lord From Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala And your confidence in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala And it will lead you to be more confident in yourself And less dependent on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Ajib. Humbleness and brokenness for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala This is the greatest of things These are the things which had the greatest impact on people around the whole world When they wrote their books and their connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Was based upon brokenness And where you have Imam al-Haddad for example My weakness is within weakness. I have confessed to my uh, brokenness. So that wasn't confidence in self. It was brokenness for the sake of Allah. But that increased them in such beautiful proximity, proximity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and acceptance that that person who would say that had Im uh, impact worldwide for millions and millions of people. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, those who say to the believers, people have gathered, they've gathered against you. And the only thing that they've said to them was, truly, we have trust in Allah. They never said, we have trust in ourselves. They're not saying, we are confident in ourselves. They said, hasbuna Allah and not hasbuna anfusana. Hasbuna, our, Allah is sufficient for us. And they didn't say, we are sufficient for ourselves. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make this gathering and this coming together 
a huge, great results within us and within the Ummah in the East and in the West. In wherever the Arab and the non-Arabs, the Muslim and the non-Muslims, and, and may Allah guide many of the people. And may Allah make this a means where many Muslimin are guided to steadfastness. And this, and this means, and this becomes a cause of those who haven't believed yet to come into belief. And that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows us to live upon our life and what He wants to see from us and what pleases Him. He is the most of merciful, He's the most merciful, the most merciful. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we are dependent on Him and we trust in Him, and Allah is sufficient for us. And we ask him for steadfastness and the correction of our affairs in this world, in the barzakh and in the afterlife. And that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes us of the most closest of an elite of his slaves who bring victory to Allah and to the Messenger of Allah through everything that they have. Ya Rabb, keep us firm upon the truth and upon guidance. And O oh Allah, extract and remove our souls when we are in a good faith. And we recite Fatiha in the presence of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Jazakumullah khair. Um, I don't know if they'll be making dua, if it, can't, it has come to an end. Um, the multiqa has come to an end. And inshallah, um, we hope that, you know, there's nothing more that needs to be said. Jazakumullah um, khair. Remember to make dua for everyone from the people in the studio, um, in Darul Mustafa and in Tareem, um, who have been working effortlessly to get us these streams so that we can listen in and that we can benefit. We always make dua for them and remember them. And the mashayikh and the scholars who are always there and teaching us and increasing us in knowledge. Jazakumullah khair. We'll be back tomorrow, inshallah, for the Thursday night morning. Jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.